as you ramp up your live streaming, you're gonna get into this groove where you're gonna wanna improve your workflow and find tools to, uh, to really enhance your live streams, your webinars, even your regular Zoom meetings potentially. And as your level of experience goes from beginner to intermediate to professional, you're gonna wanna even just supercharge it. If you are an Ecamm Live user and you are inside of the Ecamm Live community, you probably, more than likely, have heard of the Stream Deck. This is a device made by Elgato who also makes fantastic lights. They also make some uh, HDMI capture cards. They also make a great microphone and just a lot of cool products. But you don't hear many people talk about the Loop Deck Live and that's what I wanna talk about today. Now I've already got a video about the Loop Tech Live. You can click on the card right there and access that video at any time. It is my initial review of the product. Please remember as we go through this that I am also a photographer, so that's why I leaned more towards the Loop Tech, which you'll learn about now. So the Loop Deck is just like the Stream Deck. It is actually about the same size. It might actually be a little bit thinner. It comes with a stand. It has these digital screen buttons. But what it has, which the Stream Deck does not have, is tactile buttons and knobs. Physical buttons and knobs which can also be customized. The Loop Deck Live gets plugged in via USB-C. It comes with a USB a adapter so that you can also plug it into a regular USB port if you don't have USB-C. But because it's USB-C, which also means it gets USB 3.0 speeds, the data transfer rate is basically instant. From the time you push a button, things change, things happen. So as I said, you've got these tactile buttons in addition to the screen buttons, which can be customized, which really opens the doors for what you can do and actually can potentially make things more natural like turning up the volume. So there are multiple versions of the Loop Deck. The one I'm talking about is the Loop Deck Live. This is the more compact version of the product, but there is also the Loop Deck Plus, which is not intended for live streaming. And then there is the Loop Deck CT, which is sort of a combination of the Plus and the Live. And if you have that in your budget, that's what I would actually recommend but it's close to 600 US dollars. So the Loop Deck Live comes with built-in profiles for different applications. Like if you're on a Mac OS, you've got a Mac OS profile, you've got a Safari profile. If you have Chrome, there's a Chrome profile. If you use Firefox, there's a Firefox profile. But there's also profiles for software like Final Cut Pro and Lightroom and Photoshop and Premiere Pro and ScreenFlow and the list goes on. There are a lot of custom profiles including a custom profile for Ecamm Live. And that's what we're talking about in this video. So great, there's already a profile. Hop to it. Oh, I'm just kidding. So I did customize the Ecamm Live profile that they give you, but I figure that they built this profile with workflow in mind and it's very, so it's very optimized. So I didn't wanna modify it too much. I kept it very basic, very similar to what it was out of the box, so to speak, when I first downloaded and imported the profile, but, I did customize it, which we'll get to in a little bit. One of the nice things about the Loop Deck Live is you can also customize the brightness of it. So if you find that once your set is set up and the lights are in place and whatnot, if you find the Loop Deck Live's screen to be too distracting, you can dim it so that it's not as bright, or you can brighten it if it's not bright enough for you. You could also use it stand so it's on an angle facing you, or you could leave it flat on your desk so it's more out of the way. But keep in mind, it's about the size of a trackpad, so it's pretty small. It's, it's a pretty small device and it's powered by its USB-C cable, so there's no additional plugs. Now I mentioned that there are tactile buttons in addition to the digital screen buttons, but it is worth noting that Loop Deck built in vibration. So when you push a digital screen button, there is that sort of tactile feel because it vibrates on your finger so you know the button was pushed. Step one is to buy the Loop Deck device. Step two is to download its software and install it. Step three is to actually download the Ecamm Live custom profile. From there, you can then import that custom profile. Just follow all the steps, it walks you through it. It's not that complicated in the long run, and there's also documentation to help you along the way if you need to, but you can also refer to the article linked in the description down below to learn more about it. So once that profile is imported, you're gonna see a new application set up for Ecamm Live, and in there are all the presets made for each screen and each button of that device whenever Ecamm Live is open. Now it's worth also noting that there is a dynamic mode inside of the Loop Deck software. That means that if you are in 
Ecamm Live, what's displayed on the device will be the Ecamm Live profile. If you switch to the Chrome browser, it's gonna be the Loop Tech Live profile for Chrome. If you open up Zoom and you have a profile for Zoom, it's gonna be its profile. So it will switch to whatever profile is associated with that application. If you turn off dynamic mode, sure, you can leave it set to Ecamm Live at all times, but do not expect Ecamm Live to react to a button pushed when you're not inside of Ecamm Live. Hopefully Loop Deck can actually make that work in the future. That would be amazing. But until then, it's not gonna work. You'll need to actually be in Ecamm Live for those buttons to do something. So now that you have it all set up and you wanna go in and customize, you can go ahead and do that. You can do that very easily. It's literally drag and drop. But because the custom profile is set up, you can easily modify that with a couple clicks and that's it. What I put in on the scenes section of this custom profile is Basically, every scene that I use on a regular basis is set up with a name on the screen as buttons. So scene one is set up and that is my camera. It's my Nikon Z6. And that is going through a Camlink 4K. Scene two is my second monitor and my camera in a circle at the top right. Scene three is my second screen without any camera. Then I go into the most common client I have, which is doing a regular webinar. And this webinar is actually done through Zoom, but the video is actually coming through Ecamm. Zoom is set up to use the Ecamm's virtual camera, and then I use Black Hole to sort of send that audio from Ecamm to Zoom. So scene four is actually the countdown for this live show. And what this does is it, it plays a video overlay, it plays music, it has a countdown, and my mic is muted. When the countdown is done, it goes into scene five, which is actually an introduction for the show. And at that point, my mic is still muted, but it's the introduction video. And at the end of the video, it automatically goes into scene six. Scene six is actually a sort of a copy of scene one. It's just my camera. And at this point, my microphone unmutes. Finally is scene seven. Again, a click of a button, I can go to scene seven, which is the outro to the show. And it's again, a short video and my mic gets muted and nothing else happens. It just stops at the end. But then there are also dials and other buttons I can modify on each page. Every dial, in fact, is a dial and a button. So on the same scenes page, I've added some things that were not in there originally that have made my life a little bit easier. So you have a dial that is the mic volume for myself. In case I find myself too hot or not hot enough, I can adjust that. And then with a click of that dial, I can also mute the microphone. I also set another dial, its button to be the timer. I can show and hide the timer with the click of one of those buttons. This is more useful if you're doing a intro or something where you have a countdown and you're visible in the background and then you want to hide the timer to talk to your viewers and then show the timer again and walk away. So there are many things that you can do with the Loop Deck Live in conjunction with Ecamm Live. They work really well together. And sure, you can do a lot of this with Stream Deck. I mean, tons of people are doing this with Stream Deck, but I find as somebody who really likes buttons and dials that, that those extra tactile features really speak to me. And as somebody who does a lot of Photoshop, Lightroom and Final Cut Pro work, being able to use the same device in that software has also been very beneficial. So if you're in the market for a workflow device like this, then I recommend checking out the Loop Deck Live in addition to your research about the Stream Deck. You might like it more, maybe you won't. You, you gotta be the judge, you gotta try it out for yourself. But between hosting webinars for Imagely, for PhotoFocus, and for many other companies, it, it's really never let me down. Loop Deck Live and Ecamm Live have never let me down. Be sure to click the link in the description down below where I wrote an article to go along with this video. And don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Heck, karate kick the notification bell. See you in the next video.